good morning everyone myself saurabh das uh, junior resident nilratan sarkar medical college and hospital kolkata today i am going to present a paper of uh, bhl syndrome spectrum of appearances in a single patient uh, introduction uh, BHL syndrome, it is an autosomal dominant hereditary disease. It is caused by germline mutation of BHL gene located in the short arm of chromosome 3. The diagnosis of BHL can be made clinically when the characteristic clinical history and findings are manifested, in, such as presence of two or more CNS hemangioblastomas. Genetic testing for heterogeneous germline BHL mutation may be also used to confirm the diagnosis of BHL. Imaging plays an important role in the diagnosis as well as surveillance of the patient with VHL. Around 80% of the patient with VHL inherit disorder from an affected parent. The mean age of initial tumor diagnosis of VHL is 26 years, though it ranges from 1 to 70 years, while it may arise de novo in 20% of cases. The clinical diagnosis of VHL can be made out of uh, three of the circumstances. First, in a patient with family history of VHL and at least one of the characteristic VHL-related tumors such as retinal hemangioblastoma, CNS hemangioblastoma, clear cell RCC, pancreatic nets, and endolympatic sac tumors. Or uh, uh, point number two, in the presence of two or more retinal or CNS hemangioblastoma, or it can be in the presence of one retinal or CNS hemangioblastoma, plus at least one of the characteristics of VHL-related visceral tumor, excluding the renal and epidermal cyst. Uh, these are the manifestation of VHL. Uh, for retina, it can be retinal hemangioblastomas, CNS, cerebellar and spinal hemangioblastoma, head, head and neck, endolympatic sac tumor. For pancreas, it can be manifest as pancreatic cyst, serostatinoma, or pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor. For kidney, it can manifest as renal cyst or clear cell renal carcinoma. For adrenal gland, it can represent as pheochromocytoma. For reproductive organs, it appears as epidermal cyst, papillary cystadenoma of epidermis, or broad ligament cystadenoma. Uh, this is the case report. A 33-year-old female patient presented with the complaints of diffuse abdominal pain and blurring of vision since six months. On her physical examination revealed that uh, she had a decreased visual activity and a vague abdominal lump in the central abdomen. Uh, following a laboratory investigation that her renal function uh, was mildly deranged. In at first, the ultrasound of the abdomen revealed there is a heterogeneous hypoechoic lesion as well as a cystic lesion both in kidneys and pancreatic parenchyma that uh, lead to the suspicious and further, when uh, we did uh, cross-sectional imaging with CCT abdomen and followed by a MRI of brain and um, of, uh, spine for screening of the syndromic nature. Uh, these are the radiologic findings that we found in our case. Uh, uh, we found cerebellar hemangioblastoma, which appeared as a well-defined solid enhancing nodule without cystic component. Spinal hemangioblastoma uh, came as a well-defined uh, well ovoid avidly enhancing spinal mass. Pancreas cyst uh, appears, simple thin wall cyst without any mural nodule, pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor, solid enhancing lesion in pancreatic parenchyma demonstrating an enhancement in arterial phase. Renal cyst, renal cell carcinoma, it appears as heterogeneously enhancing hypervascular renal mass. Pheochromocytomas and extraordinary paraganglioma appear as a solid uh, arterial phase as avidly enhancing masses, retinal hemangioblastoma and broad ligament cystadenoma, uh, which appeared as an enhancing, enhancing hypodense cystic lesion in the adnexa. These are the imaging features of renal cyst. This is a CCT abdomen. The arrow shows up our clinical finding. This is for renal cell carcinoma. A well-defined uh, heterogeneous hypodense lesion was noted in the lower part of the right kidney. This is a pancreatic cyst um, that appeared. This is for pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor. Two well-defined hypotense lesion in pancreatic parenchyma demonstrated intense but heterogeneous uptake of contrast in arterial phase and heterogeneous enhancement in the uh, venous space, uh, which is likely prevalent in pancreatic nets. Adrenal pheochromocytomas. Now this is extraadrenal paraganglioma. Heterogeneity and hypotensilation in uh, pre-vertebral region. 
this is appears as a papillary cystic adenoma a broad ligament uh this is the um, casualty feature in mri for retinal hemangioblastoma the arrow represents the clinical finding uh, this is for cerebellar hemangioblastoma this is a t1 contrast uh, image few well defined ovoid hyperdense lesion was seen in the left cerebral uh, hemisphere this is for spinal hemangioblastoma MRI finding. Now coming uh, to the part of discussion, uh, VHL disease, it is an autosomal, inherited autosomal dominant disorder which is characterized by multisystemic involvement in the form of retinal hemangioblastoma, hemangioblastomas of the central nervous system, endolymphatic sac tumor, renal cell carcinoma, pancreatic cyst, neuroendocrine tumor, pyochromocytomas, extra adrenal paraganglioma, and papillary cyst adenos of the broad ligament. Our case shows that in a patient with multiple casualties of VHL related tumors, one should do detailed workup to rule out a VHL. Renal involvement in the form of renal cyst and RCC is multicentric and bilateral in at least 75% of the patients. Pancreatic lesions as seen in VHL include pancreatic cysts, cysts, microcystic adenomas, and adenocarcinomas. Out of these, pancreatic cysts are the most common. Only 7 to 18% of the older patients of the VHL have pheochromocytomas. It was a detection of the lesion uh, on a CT abdomen, but helped us in further evaluating the patient in an MRI of brain and spinal cord. The MRI further detected the hemangioblastomas of the brain and the spinal cord. The patient was operated for the RCC in the kidney and the neuroendocrine uh, uh, tumor for pancreas and was kept on follow up. The guidelines for follow-up in a patient aged more than 15 years with VHL is as follows. Annual comprehensive ophthalmological examination, annual evaluation of blood pressure and hearing, annual blood test of plasma, metanephrine and 24 hours uh, urine metanephrine, abdominal ultrasound yearly, abdominal MRI with or without contrast every one to two years, MRI brain yearly, MRI spine every two to three years. The detection of any of the characteristic lesion of VHL should prompt evaluation of detective any additional lesions among the white gamut of VHL which confirm the syndromic nature. Thank you all. These are the following uh, references uh, that have to made me this paper.